in this video, we're going to um, think about the second component of that we need in order to write down Faraday's law, the um, next one of Maxwell's equations, the next fundamental piece of 802 that we're building up towards. The first part of it was the integral of b dot dA, which we talked about previously. Um, today, in this video, we're going to discuss something which is referred to as the electromotive force, or EMF. So what is it? Well, the way to think about the electromotive force is to think about any closed path. So here is a closed path. Now, the actual closed path that we're going to care about is the closed path that is the edge of the disk that we do the integral of b dot dA through. That's how we're going to put the two pieces together. But for um, right now, let's forget about the b dot dA part, and let's just talk about a closed path. Um, and I am going to imagine taking a charge Q and walking this charge Q around this closed path. So I take this charge Q and I move it along here, I move it 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 all the way around this closed path. And the electromotive force is defined as the integral all the way around this closed path of what? It's the force that the charge feels, dot ds, as I walk my way around the path, divided by q, the q of the charge itself. So I'm taking this charge, and I'm walking it around this path, around, 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 around. And all the way along, I'm asking, what's the force that the charge is feeling along the direction of the path? That's f dot ds. And I'm doing the integral of f dot ds along the path, f dot ds here, f dot ds here. What's the force pushing along the path, either pushing me along or pushing against the direction the charge is moving? What's the integral of f dot ds? I'm adding it up all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, all the way around the closed path. And that is the EMF. That, after I divide by q, is the EMF, or electromotive force. Now, this should remind you of something that we've seen before. This is very similar to the electric potential. Um, what we did many times before, we talked about a there was a point A and there was a point B, and we had some path going from A to B, and we had an integral along the path from A to B of the electric field dot dS, and this was the potential difference between A and B. So the integral of e dot dA from of, of e dot dS from A to B, if there was an electric field that was pushing me along here, that would be positive, and that would mean that um, A was at a higher potential than B. So the signs are such that this was VA minus VB, the potential difference between the electrostatic potential at A minus the electrostatic potential at B. So we've seen that before. This seems very similar. Certainly the units of it are the same. The units of this was voltage. Remember that an electric field is a force divided by a charge, so the units of this are also volts. Same units as this. And a very, very similar definition. So why are we introducing a new term? Why am I calling this some new name, electromotive force, instead of calling this electric potential? Um, well, the reason is the following. Let's, let's try and think about this the way we thought about it here. Um, if I think about this as going down a potential gradient, I'm going to start here. I'm going down the potential gradient, down the potential gradient, down the potential gradient, down the potential gradient, down, 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 down. And now I got back to where I started. So if I think about this as going down the potential gradient, I'm either always going to get zero or I'm going to be living in some sort of a crazy Escher print where I can go downhill, 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 and get back to where I start. Um, and so. In fact, in the context of Faraday's law where we're going, this electromotive force can be non-zero around a closed loop like this. And that means I should not think about it in, t in terms of going down, downhill on a potential landscape. Because if I think about it this way, it could never be non-zero because I get back to my starting point. 
Um, and this is the reason why we introduce a new phrase in this context, even though the electromotive force is very similarly defined to what we previously defined as the potential electric potential difference. Okay, so the electromotive force then, I take a charge around a closed path, I do the integral of F dot dS, where F is the force felt by the charge, and the electromotive force around this closed path is given by this integral. And um, if the closed path is a wire, um, uh, and if this, this electromotive force is not zero, um, then a current flows. And the current will be related to the electromotive force by Ohm's law. So the current that flows will be related to the electromotive force by electromotive force is given by current times resistance, R being the resistance of the wire. So if I have a wire along this path, and if the integral around this closed path of the force felt by charges in that wire, the F dot, integral of F dot dS around this path divided by the Q is non-zero, then that means that a current will flow in this wire. But I've defined the electromotive force without there being a need for there being a wire here. This can just be a path through space, and I can ask what is the integral of, of the force on an imaginary charge? What would that integral of F dot dS be if I took a charge around this path, and that will give me the EMF around an arbitrary path, um, whether or not there's a wire present. But if there is a wire present, then a current flows. So um, we, this is the second key ingredient that we need to write down Faraday's law.